Hey there, and uh, welcome to Large Format Friday. I'm your host, Matt Mirage, and if this is the first time you're stopping by the channel, there's a playlist of our entire third season of LFF. If you haven't subscribed yet, each and every Friday, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be talking about something large format photography. Uh, enough talking though, I'm a little late already, uh, and we're here in Cantwell Cliffs, down in the Hocking Hills. This is really close to where I visited earlier in the winter at Rock House. It's actually only a couple miles away, but should be a completely different feel. So let's head down the trail. Okay. All right. We're gonna try something different today. Uh, maybe a little bit more of a vlogging style. I got a camera now that has some, uh, some in-body stabilization. So I can talk to you guys while I hike down on the trail. It's a little bit more efficient use of time and allows me to catch some of this light. Uh, admittedly, I'm a little bit late today to the trail. Uh, I normally like to get here before sunrise, so by the time I'm down there, I can catch some of that light coming up and see if I can show you behind me. Uh, the light has already started poking out quite a bit. So uh, yeah, let's get down there. All right, now we start the stairs. We got a lot of stairs today. Hey, uh, large format pro tip, don't leave your dirt cloth in your car. I could probably do it without that, but uh, it's gonna be really rough. So back up the stairs one more time. Let's go. If I didn't have a workout already, I can about four times as much as I needed to. That should do it. Whew. So for this first wide shot today, what we ended up doing is just getting a wide field of view uh, of the stairs here. Uh, there's been a, a lot of times where I've gone vertical, but it just feels too constrictive because it's already tight and then just the tightness of the stairs just narrows it down. I think maybe if this was like a panoramic strip, it would make for something more interesting. But in the eight by 10 aspect ratio, it's gonna lend itself a little bit better to these larger uh, open spaces. And this sunlight that's starting to kind of peek through the back, as well as some of the ambient fill I'm getting from the front here is working to my advantage. We did about two minutes on some T-Max 100 F45-ish. Okay. Let's end the exposure. Just like that. Now we don't have to move the camera far to get to our next composition. Right after I do the warm up there, I usually do a warm up right around the corner here uh, because I just have this nice little uh, sliver of an entryway and with a wide angle lens, I can try to get some of, uh, some of this opening here uh, as well as get a little bit of that light peeking through the other side. So I'm actually gonna change out my wide angle because this one isn't quite wide enough. Okay. Let's open the lens up. A note about wide angle lenses and image circle. Typically wide angle and super wide angle lenses will just barely cover uh, the frame in the, even if it's stated for that format. So what you want to do is make sure your detents are lined up. So if your camera has detents, uh, that's what these little lines are, that's a zeroed out point. That means I am dead on from my front standard to my rear standard. I want to make sure those are as squared as possible. Same thing with my movements because movements do eat into image circles. So back of the camera is straight, front tilt is straight, and usually what's going to happen is there's going to be a little little notch in the uh, in the brass on a field camera like this. Dark claw. Now this one I may not want to do in horizontal. I might want to do a portrait of this one. Yeah, this one definitely lends itself better to portrait. A not so standard composition. Had to raise the tripod way up. When you're dealing with a wide angle lens, if you don't want a lot of foreground, you're gonna have to go 
uh, pretty vertical with the tripod. Um, I don't want to do too much rise and fall, again, because I don't have as much image circle on this lens. This thing just barely covers 8x10, uh, stopped down to about f22, f32. Let's meter this one out. This one's going to be a really tricky one to meter. There's, no matter what's happening, uh, I'm going to have tons of backlight that's going to get blown, but I might be able to save the detail that's in there. So I'm going to look for my darkest, my darkest shadows. Like medium dark, minute and a half. That sounds about right. It has gotten lighter. All right. End of the exposure. go. Place the dark slide. Two down, four to go. I spent quite a bit more time on those first two exposures than I thought I would. Uh, let's head a little bit further down the trail. There's a lot more sunlight now and see what we can see. Uh, I'm going to use the leading lines of these rocks to kind of carve out the waterfall. And uh, I'm also going to use the super vignette of this wide angle lens uh, to help some of these especially bright spots uh, in the corners. It's going to darken those down a little bit. All right, let's meter this out. So since I have a lot of similar readings that I'm getting with my meter in the, the value of these rocks, I'm just probing around with the meter. So I'm holding down on the read, I'm in single mode, and I'm holding down and just checking my readings. And at F32, at the ISO I'm shooting, which is 80, uh, I'm fluctuating between four and 15 seconds. Now that's for middle gray. Uh, it's probably not gonna be that. It's gonna be more like between two and four seconds because Load her up, lock down, lock that side, and two seconds. Ready, and. I'm gonna try a shot I haven't tried before. The reason I haven't tried it before is because this is a really awkward oh, path to go through. So, I kind of want to show how I'm perched up here with the camera. And we're, uh, you know, we're at the back of, uh, of that little cave that I just kind of shot the foreground of. And we're looking, we're looking at all of this loveliness out here. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. I love the look of it, and it's worth taking the, uh, the small risk of the uh, precarious tripod positioning. So uh, make sure you get a good tripod that, uh, that holds more than twice the weight of your entire camera kit. And then you won't have to worry about it too much. All right, let's throw the dark cloth on there. Let's see what we can see. All right, I just need to focus a little bit closer to the front. Really liking those rocks in the foreground. I'm glad I got up a lot higher because I can get these big boulders in here. They look like tiny little rocks because we are still super wide. We're using the 121 um, seeing wide today. It's just all there is to it. All right, let's go for the clipping areas just to see where those are gonna be at. Quarter second at 32. Wow, and then 15 seconds. Well, it's not really gonna be 15, it's like four. So four to a quarter, that sounds about right. That's saying four seconds, so I'm a second. So a second at 32, that sounds, yeah, that sounds pretty good. But I'm actually gonna go all the way to 45. So two Mississippis at 45. Okay, unexposed side. Space is getting tight.
So I overshot. I only need the 250 for this perspective. Yeah, this looks quite a bit better. Bring this in a little bit. Ooh, yeah, this is looking good. There it is. I want just a little bit of that sun. I don't want too much of it. Just enough to give me that, that indication. That deep depth of field, probably, yeah, 45 looks, looks pretty good. Let's meter it out. Now, I want to make sure that my, yeah, I think my dynamic range is going to be fine. That is going to be a crisp highlight, though. Okay, we are at four seconds. First last shot I have here, I am out way later than I normally am. So I'm kind of compromising on this shot. I wanted to do something uh, in landscape orientation, but I was, no matter what was happening with the wideness of the shot, I was always gonna catch some of that sun and I was gonna get like the, uh, you know, just the shape of the aperture blades. This wide angle lens doesn't have many, so it'd be kind of an ugly shot. So I instead am doing a vertical orientation, which is just giving me enough cutoff that I'm not getting that harshness from the sun. And I'm just gonna lead from this, uh, this fallen branch all the way up through uh, the overgrown steps on the back side of the trail. Let's check our focus. All right, stop down our lens. All right, that's the point at which I get the background sharp. And that's 32, let's just go 45. All right, well, I've got a little bit of that haze. Let's load up our shot. Last one of the day, two seconds. Right. Ready and. Pack it up. Whew, all right. Well, we had quite the hike today. A lot of verticality, not a very long trail, but it can be very, very, very hilly. Uh, it's completely overcast now. Sun's almost entirely gone. The wind's picked up and it's gonna start raining soon. So perfect timing to call it a day for large format Friday. I didn't get too heavy into the tech today and that's because a lot of the field work, I just want to be chill and you know, here I am out in nature shooting. But if you have any questions about the technical aspects involved in large format photography, you can always feel free to ask questions down below in the comments or you can shoot me a long form question, large format questions at gmail.com. Thanks again for stopping by and we'll catch you next week for more LFF. Okay, more right.